Hi folks, this is all the fruit and recently I made a video about fruit I want to try in South America. In that video I asked uh, if you want to see more such videos about fruit I want to try from other parts of the world. Well, nobody said yes, nobody said no. The video was moderately popular. A uh, couple people watched it. Well, I don't know if uh, this was just because they thought they would show them some beautiful pictures of uh, South American fruit. I didn't do this. It was just a video of myself talking. But since so many people watched it, and some watched it even over several minutes, I thought, yeah, maybe uh, people would like those kind of videos. So I will make a second one and see if it's a lot less popular than the first one. I will probably abandon the idea if it stays more or less popular. I, I might do a series. So please tell me if you like to see such videos where you basically watch me talk about what fruit I want to try. I am not using pictures of fruit I don't know and I haven't tried because I'm trying to use only my own uh, material and not um, get stuff from others. So, well, Australia. Yeah, bush tucker is a very popular thing in Australia. Basically, it means everything from a grub to a kangaroo and also including all the edible plants there. And Australia has a lot of fruit. Well, a lot of them are quite dangerous. Everything in Australia is trying to kill you, including the food and including the fruit. But that makes it kind of interesting. Since I saw a book about Australian bush tucker about 20 years ago, I always wanted to go there and try all this stuff. Well, excluding the grubs and uh, worms and uh, roaches and other things. So let's see what fruit we can find in Australia, which I haven't eaten yet. Well, the first one is the Doda laurel or laugh vine, Casuta megalanta or Casuta filiformis. It's the only parasitic genus in the Laurasi. Uh, you can use the stems as a vegetable. You can use it for medicine. You can use it to make paper. And the stem and the fruit are quite uh, edible and tasty. Well, I... I think I saw it on native markets in Borneo, it also grows in Indonesia and uh, all the way to Southeast Asia, but I never tried it. I think I even identified it as Todar Laurel, but back then I didn't know that the fruit are edible too, so something I missed on. Well, then we have Bolwara or Copper, Copper Laurel, Oipomatia Laurina, that's not in the Laurasium, it's in the Oipomaciaceae. A small tree from Australia and New Guinea rainforest with sweet and aromatic fruit which you use mostly in cooking and desserts and jams and beverages and stuff because of the strong flavor. I still would like to find it in the jungle and eat it fresh instead of importing some stuff from Australia just to taste the taste. Well, then you have the conquer berry, Carissa spinarum. I've eaten several Carissa species. Carissa macrocarpa is quite popular in Spain and on the Canary Islands as an ornamental. So, yeah, I would really like to try this Canis Carissa spinarum, which is native to dry areas of, no of northern Australia. Uh, it's a shrub with small black berries, which are uh, sweet but can cause a lot of thirst if you eat too much of them. The next thing is the tulip plum, Pleiogenium timorense. It's an anacardiaceae, so it's related to cashew and mangoes and stuff. A roundish to flattish fruit, growing from the Philippines to Australia, so I could have encountered it in Borneo, but I think I didn't. Sour, better when buried in the ground, that's an interesting way of preparing it. Or cooked or used in jams, yeah, that sounds more familiar. Well, I guess I might bury it in the ground <laughs> and see if it tastes better later. Then the lemon aspen, Acronychia acidula, in the Rutaceae, quite a dry fruit from the Queensland rainforest. The leaf smell of mango, interesting. Sour fruit with lime and grapefruit flavor, popular for flavor in drinks. By the way, you don't need to write everything down. I'll put my notes in the description so that you can check on all the uh, names and stuff. Probably it would even be easier to put this down as a website than as a video but since we are on YouTube we're gonna do it as a video. The red bush apple Sisygium zuborbicolare it's like a rose apple but red and tart not so rose flavored. 
Sometimes it can be much bigger than a rose apple. I, I looked at pictures and it's often the size of a real apple. Uh, flesh described of being like a pomegranate. They compare it a lot to a pomegranate. Well, it is the size and looks of a pomegranate, but I don't understand how the flesh should be similar to pomegranate flesh because you don't eat the flesh of the pomegranate, you eat the seeds. And it's harvested commercially in North Australia, so it cannot be that bad. Well, then there is the kakadu plum or billy goat plum, Terminalia fernandiana. Interesting, Terminalia, I know it mostly from Terminalia catapa, which actually grows about 60 70 meters behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but Terminalia catapa is mostly used for its uh, seeds, which are called the tropical elements. But this billy goat plum is sour, soft when ripe, high in vitamin C, and salt as a powder. So they use the fruit, not the seeds. Interesting, I would like to try this Terminalia. Then we have the so-called green plum, Buchanania obovata. It's in the Anacardiaceae, so again a mango relative. Described as one of the tastiest fruit of North Australia, but during a quick search I didn't find any more taste description. Well, one of the tastiest fruit of North Australia, that sounds good. The bush apricot of finger soap, Meiogune cylindricarpa, it's in the Anonensi, and they wanted to taste this for years. I think I saw it on Earth Titan, one of his videos on uh, unknown Anonesi fruits. There were a, a couple fruit I, a couple Anonesi fruit I, I learned from those videos. Well, this bush apricot looks basically like an orange sausage. The skin and the pulp are edible and have apricot flavor, so quite different from most other Anonesi I've known. Then the wild grape. Um, Amphelocissus acetosa, it's in the Vitaceae, so it's a relative of the true grape. Bitter skin, which you shouldn't eat, sweet flesh, but a hot and bitter aftertaste. Yeah, sound like, sounds like Amphelocissus. I've tried a couple of them, and the aftertaste is not that good. You could eat them, but there is a price for that. And then the cocky apple, that sounds interesting, Planktonia carea. It's in the Lecitidiaceae, so in the monkey pot uh, family. Mm. Well, in this case the fruit is edible and not the seeds. Interesting. In Lecitidiaceae usually the seeds are edible, not the fruit. Then we have the Wombat Berry, Oistrepus latifolius. It's in the Asparagaceae, so it's in the Asparagus family. Basically, that's a subfamily of the Liliaceae. Small flavorless areoles between inedible seeds and skin. Well, doesn't sound so interesting. It, it sounds like a lot of asparagaceae uh, fruit. Small flavorless areoles between inedible seeds and skin. That sounds exactly like asparagaceae. But the tubers, like in some other asparagaceae, eaten by wombats and humans. Well, if wombats eat it, I guess they cannot be bad. There are a lot of asparagus tubers you can eat, and apparently also the one of the wombat berry. Then you have the medium berry, Astromyrtus dulcis. Well, oh god, this dog scared me. <laughs> okay, the medium berry, Astromyrtus dulcis. It says to be, it's said to be the sweetest Australian fruit. It's small and whitish, but as long as it's super sweet, I'll take it. Tucker bush, well, tucker bush sounds good. It basically means food plant. Attractocarpus fitzalani, a seven centimeter large hard shelled fruit with several soft white segments and the flavor like mangosteen. That sounds good. I love mangosteen, so if they have some sort of desert mangosteen, I'll totally go and search for it. And we have moon trees, Kunzia pomifera. The prostate shrub, the one centimeter size berries taste like a spicy apple. Yeah, that's something I would like to try. And then the bush tomato or desert raisin or curgera, Solanum centrale. They have a couple interesting Solanum species to eat in Australia. I tried the kangaroo apple last year and it wasn't too bad. At least uh, some of the good ripe fruit and good plants were not too bad. They were not all good. 
Well, this bush tomato is cultivated by Aboriginal communities and harvested when dried on the shrub. I also ate something like this in northern Italy, some Australian, um, some Australian Zolano, which was harvest, uh, which I harvested after it dried on the shrub. It was good, but this is a different one. This has a strong taste of caramel and tamarillo, and eaten whole or used in sauces. Sounds a bit like the one I ate, but the one I ate tasted more like raisins and cranberries. Then we have the boab nut, Aranzonia gregori, the only baobab species in Australia. Nobody really knows how it arrived there. There are only a couple locations on the northwestern coast, and it's believed that maybe someone like the, the Arabs or the Chinese or the Polynesians brought it from uh, Madagascar to... Uh, to Australia because it's quite it's quite far for for being brought there by natural means like sea currents or birds so quite a quite a mysterious thing I I recently harvested Adanzonia digitata here on Tenerife and I would like to try other Adanzonia species since this is the only one uh, that grows in Australia yeah uh, I totally would like to try it so the dried lemony pulp is used in smoothies and cakes and so on. Yeah, sounds like the one here in, Aust uh, here in Tenerife, the, the, the one from, from the African continent which has been introduced to Tenerife. By the way, the one in Australia is also used as a prison sometimes because some of the old big trees have huge, have huge uh, holes in them. So folks, those were, I don't know, 20, 21, 22 fruit I would like to try in Australia. Tell me if you want to see more of those videos. I'm publishing the second one now, but I don't know if I should make any more. I have a couple more bucket lists. Also tell me what type of videos you would like to, to see. Right now I'm thinking about maybe changing some things about the channel. Give me some ideas. Apart from that, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos. For now, still from the beautiful subtropical island of Tenerife here behind me. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.